Okay, in today's video, I am going to go over how to calculate the charge, the voltage, and the equivalent capacitance for series that, excuse me, for capacitors that are in series. This is the circuit we're going to use for this video. We have a 12 farad capacitor, a 6 farad capacitor, and a 3 farad capacitor, and we have a 6 volt voltage supply. Okay, and we are going to, in 10 minutes or less, do the following five things. Number one, we're going to figure out what is the total gain in the circuit. Pretty easy. We're going to do number two, what is the total or the equivalent capacitance? I'm going to go back and forth between total and equivalent, and I mean the same thing when I say total and equivalent capacitance. And then we're going to get the total charge. These are the things that I like to call the big three. The total voltage, the total or equivalent capacitance, and the total charge. Then, after that, we can get the charge stored on each capacitor, and then we can get the voltage drop or the potential difference really across the plates of each capacitor. And we're going to do all five of those things, as I said, in 10 minutes or less. And the first thing we're going to do is figure out what is the total voltage. Now, this is very easy. We have one battery right here. It's six volts, so that means the total voltage in the circuit is six volts. Basically, just saying we have a six volt battery I want to make sure everybody knows that. The total capacitance. Now, we have capacitors in series. These are not capacitors in parallel. If these were capacitors in parallel, then we would simply add up 12, 6, and 5 and get 23. But we have capacitors in series, so we must use what I like to call the 1 over equation. The total, the equivalent capacitance, is equal to 1 over the equivalent capacitance is equal to 1 divided by the capa capacitance of capacitor number 1 plus 1 over the capacitance of capacitor number 2 plus 1 over the capacitance of capacitance number 3. Okay? You don't add them up. Sorry about that. That's parallel capacitors. Series capacitors, we use this nice equation, and we can just plug the numbers in. We get that 1 over the equivalent capacitance is 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 5 farads, and you can do that right on your calculator. 1 plus 12 plus, no, excuse me, 1 divided by 12 plus 1 divided by 6 plus 1 divided by 5, and you get on your calculator that 1 over the equivalent capacitance, or 1 over the total, is equal to 0.45 farad. That is not, I repeat, not the equivalent capacitance. That's 1 over. To get CT, or to get the equivalent capacitance, you have to take the reciprocal of both sides. So I'm just going to flip this one over, and I get CT over 1, which is CT. This is actually, um, you know, if you think about it a little bit mathematically, 0 0.450 over 1. I flip that one over, and I get that CT equals 1 over 4 point, 0 0.405, 0 0.450, excuse me. So that means that the total capacitance, the equivalent capacitance, is 2.22 farads. All right, that means that in order to get 2.22, basically all I do is I take 1 over this number, 1 over 0.45, or on my calculator I do 1 divided by 0.45, and that gives you the total capacitance, which is 2.22 farads. Okay? That's the total capacitance. Now we get the total charge. Now, the way the total charge works is, in order to get the total charge, we're going to use the capacitor equation, what I like to call. The charge is equal to the capacitance times the voltage. Q equals C times V. We want to find the total charge, which is QT, total. In order to do that, we have to use the total capacitance. That's why I like to call it total. And we have to use the total voltage. Right? You're going to do the totals, use the totals. You're going to find one of the totals, use the totals. So Q is therefore equal to 2.22 times 6 volts, and the total amount of charge stored in that circuit is 13.3 coulomb. All right? So we got the total voltage, the total capacitance, and the total charge, and now we're going to go on and do the voltage stored, you know, the charge stored on each capacitor. Now, this is relatively easy because we already found the total. You see, I have the total voltage, the total capacitance, and the total charge here. We want to know what is the charge on each capacitor. That's relatively easy to figure out because the rule for capacitors in series as it relates to charge is that the total charge is equal to 
the charge on each of the capacitors. Or since we're trying to find the charge on each capacitor, we would say the charge on each of the capacitors is equal to the total charge. Now, why is that? Well, I made a very nice video that explains why that is. I'm not going to go into it in detail, but let's just say that, let's just realize that the charge on each capacitor is equal to the total. Well, we found the total already, so we know the charge on each. The charge on number one is equal to the total, and that's 13.3 coulomb, and so on and so forth. The charge on number three is also equal to the total, which happens to be 13.32 coulomb. All right? So we use this rule. We found the total first. That's generally the way you do it. You're given a circuit. You find the total capacitance, and then you know the total voltage because it's just a 6-volt battery, and then you can calculate the total charge, which we did on the previous slide. And then we know that the charge on each of the capacitors is equal to the total. So, okay? Okay, next step is what's the voltage across each capacitor? Okay, now we have three capacitors in series. We have one voltage supply, just like resistors in series, the charge is going to get, excuse me, the voltage or the potential difference is going to get spread across these three. So we would say that the rule for the voltage and series capacitors is the sum of the potential differences across each capacitor is equal to the total. The total being six, the total being six. Now, in order to do this, we're going to have to calculate using our capacitor equation. Q equals C times V, we want to solve for V. So that means, for example, for number one, the potential difference across the plates of capacitor number one is Q1 divided by C1. If we're going to find number one, we have to use Q1 and C1. Well, Q1 is equal to the total. We did that on the previous slide. C1 is the capacitance, so it would be 13.32 Coulomb divided by the capacitance, which is 12 farads, and you get that the voltage is 1.11 volts. Number two is basically the same thing. The charge is the same. Remember, the charge on series capacitors is the same as the total. We calculate the total. Total 13.2 divided by the capacitance, number two, six. You get 2.22. The next one, the voltage on three is the charge on three, which is 13.32, divided by the capacitance of three, which is five, and you get 2.66. Now, remember... The rule here says that the sum of the voltage drops, the sum of the potential differences, is equal to the total voltage. So that means 1.11, 2.22, and 2.66 better add up to 6 volts. And if you add them up, they do. And if they do, that's good because they're supposed to, and that means you can feel good about what you did because you probably did it right. Okay? So that's all three, all five things. First slide, we got the total voltage the total capacitance or the equivalent capacitance, and then the total charge. And then we went right down the line, okay? And we found the total, the charge on each capacitor, then the voltage across each capacitor, and we got it all figured out, okay? I think you can do that. Follow the steps, write everything down, think about your thinking. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, then uh, you can give me a thumbs up or a comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.